his fury knows no bounds. That is the newly altered aesthetics of the brother captain of the Ordo Malleus. Bit of a peculiar walk he's got. But yeah, he's looking snazzy to say the least. Fog is going to be playing as the BC here. And he's going to be facing off against the force commander here of Tualali. Tualali. Toil. Toilet. Yeah, Toilet's playing. There's an elite league going on at the moment. And he's apparently participating in that. So normally, you know, he'd be playing his IG, but the pod the carry was always a secondary choice. Let's see how he can do against the brother captain. Right, so we've got some blue buff circles now for the Wheel of the Hammer rather than the previous yellow, which is a bit confusing because, well, it doubled up with a lot of other things. And the other thing is, you couldn't really understand when they were using Mind Blades, which is pretty important given it gives a melee skill buff that can turn melee fights quite fast. But I believe that has a distinct animation now as well. We'll see. I'm sure there will be some Mind Blades in this game. Probably. You would assume that there's going to be ASM for Twalali. And if there's ASM, then there is a reason to be using Mind Blades as well, isn't there? Fast shotguns coming out here. But they have got the damage resistance there from We Are The Hammer. Kraken Round's going to be doing a little bit more damage. But now they're in green cover, which is going to be negating a lot of the damage coming out of the shotguns. Okay, they're focusing on the scouts. They're going to retreat out of there. Fine. Yeah, BC in the situation as well to tie up one of the range squads, so neither of them would be able to shoot. A little bit unfortunate there for Twally that he couldn't get a model off the strike squads. That would have helped him a lot. But at least they've got a regen for a while. BC just going around capping points. Not too big of a deal. And Fog actually opting to go for just one IST at the start and one strike squad. So that's meant that he's lost most of the map on this side. Now he did power node this, which is quite smart because it, the only other unit in that area was the scouts and they would have just been decapping everything if he hadn't noted that power. But because he noted it, they can't. That would take too long. So they've had to run all the way across the map here and go attack this rear requisition. So it's wasting a lot of their time. Now we see interceptors coming out for fog nice and fast and we see devastators for Twally. That's pretty bad for Twally. Interceptors, of course, being a teleporting melee unit. Oh, look at that. The force commander got the kill in the strike squad after all. That's really nice for him. It's a little bit of requisition there that's going to come out for Fog. And it's going to delay his generator drops. Remember, he is running no gens right now. To be fair, Norris Twally, and that's pretty bad because he does have the power expenditure on the devs and the shotgun. So he really needs to start getting some gens down, does Toil. Probably going to be a good idea to get the power sword here because of all the heavy infantry that he's going to be facing. So there go the interceptors with their teleport, knocking over as they come in and instantly procking a special. Quite lucky. Attacks have to get out of there. They can't soft retreat out of this. They're going to retreat through them. He's running back to the force commander, but yeah, I don't really like this. They're already very low. Ooh, but there's devastators flanking. Oh, I didn't notice that. So we might need to... Is there any red for the Sanctify Global? No, there's no red. There's no red for the Sanctify Global. So these Interceptors right now are a little bit screwed. There you go. You've got the... Um, was that the red? Yeah, they just got the red there for the Global. And that gives them the energy they need to get onto the Devastators. And this is the problem. Interceptors are the counter to the Devastators. You would typically go for ASM in the matchup, not... Oh, I thought... Did I say he was an Apothecary? He's he's not an Apothecary, he's a Force Commander. I'm not even sure if I said that at the start. Normally when Tor plays Space Marines, he goes Apo. And with the, the changed portrait, I was getting confused. But, even playing as the FC, you would typically go for ASM. We'll see how he does here. He can counter-initiate the Interceptors with a Power Sword. And if he positions correctly, that could be something that leads to Fog bleeding quite a lot. Fog actually going for Purgation as his fourth unit, which is interesting. I don't know whether that's good or bad because they've been changed in the recent patch. So they're... I don't know, they're, they've got an ability now that makes them better against heroes, but they're also... 
I don't even know how to describe it. They're probably just better all around than they were before. They're certainly more resilient to melee most of the time. I'm not sure what that visual effect is trying to signify when they're hitting the squad. But anyway, we've got a big timing push here. Of course, Purgation having the incinerator will be able to do some good damage to the gen farm. And wow, Toll's got all the gens over here. Fog is now only just putting his gens down on this side of the map. Which is quite important because he's got his whole army here to defend it. So this is looking like a very good situation for Fog. Iron Halo is now up on the Force Commander. That should be pretty effective here. But he's just going to run in and deal with the Devastators. But that means that he's not at the back in order to counter-initiate with Battlecry. And actually, to be honest, given he's fighting Grey Knights who can use that energy burst to drain your energy, probably would have been a better idea to go for Artificer Armor rather than the... The... Um, the Iron Halo. Double shotguns, double shotgun blast, putting a lot of pressure onto the interceptors, but the still a strike squad is the problem. Interceptors right now on two models, very low HP. IST getting quite low. We're only losing scout models here for the Space Marines, so that's good for them. IST dropping more models. And attacks probably pulling back to the safety here of the Devastators, but unfortunately the Devastators aren't probably positioned. Okay, they do manage to suppress, that's fortunate. And nothing could kill the FC, so that's good, I guess. You can't quite get that final swing on the IST, which is unfortunate. I was just going to say, well, this leaves the power farm here for Fog quite vulnerable to a tactical marine flamer. You can see how the build time on that is very important. Because they were here for quite a while now. If only that build time was a bit faster, then this gen farm would be under a lot more pressure. We could even see for the Emperor used here by Twally to give these more damage and really, you know, optimize the speed of this bash because already the Grey Knights are coming back out from Fog. Yeah, he's not going to be able to get a full bash, honestly. He's going to be lucky if he can even kill a gen afterwards. I don't know why he's going for the power node. Maybe he wanted to just try and cap it. Okay, he has got the Devastator's position behind the attack, so that's quite smart. So when this happens, you're there to deal with them. Must have already fed them with energy from the strike squad. But I like the layering from Twalali here. But he's not... Oh. I'm going to say he's not retreating his Devastators. But it's actually the Tactical Marines running through... The retreat path there with the interceptors that's in quite a tricky spot. Force Commander probably wants to be dealing with... Oh, does that visual affect the uh, the new ability from the Purgation? Did he just use for the Emperor there? There's the Mind Blades. What a nice visual effect. Kudos to... I assume it was Cloud who did that. But whoever did that visual effect, that's really pretty. I like that. Yeah, the little, like... I don't know, the sort of like star shapes coming out do look psychic, it makes sense, but mind. And then there's a sword, like a blade, very cool. But yeah, that's a really bad engagement for Twilight, losing the force commander in the end, losing a couple of attacks, losing a couple of devastators too. I mean, this was always going to be tricky, going for devastators against this build of fog. Oh my god, he killed the interceptors. Oh shit. Did I just miss a retreat grenade? Oh, bollocks. I think he got him with a retreat grenade. And I was too busy looking down at the gen farm and the fancy new visual effects. So you can see here, Purgation doing their best to stall out this force commander. Wow, was that another mind blades? What the heck? That's very all in. Hmm. Some bleed. Two strike squad models killed. Purgation killed. Fog, though, is so far ahead in tech, it's unbelievable with all these gem bashes. I mean, Twally's got a decent excess of power. He needs to start going tier 2. He's floating a little bit. Yeah, he's going tier 2 now. Fog? He must be getting a Dreadnought. Why has he not gone for a Rhino? Maybe he thinks Twally's further ahead in tech than he is. He must be going for a Dreadnought, but this is a problem for Fog now because he's losing his gen farm. He needed to get a Rhino out sooner, so he'd have had a vehicle to dissuade this gen bash because even if he gets the Dreadnought out now, which is taking way too long because of all the power losses he's had, he's not going to have any power afterwards. So by the time it comes out, Twally could be caught up. Mm. So he's kind of throwing his lead here by not getting a unit out sooner. I'm not sure what the Brother Captain's going to do here. He's coming in a bit isolated. I think he thought he was flanking the Devastator, but Twally clearly 
was privy to it, repositioned that Devastator. He does have the Vengeance rounds to do boosted damage at close range. Really dissuading the Brocap there. No Woggy yet on the Brocap, so he's not the tankiest that he could be. But we don't have any Interceptors here, so this is a pretty bad engagement. Purgation getting very low. They're trying to suppress the Devastators, but as they lose a model, the suppression effect will dissipate. And that is a really bad engagement for Thog, of course. He lost his Interceptors, so he's really struggling right now. A good impact grenade there from the Sergeant of the ISC just to keep the tacks away. And then they've got to retreat after finishing the cap. You see Fog right now. It was a bit of a bait. Sending all of his troops down here. Trying to keep Twilight focused on this side whilst he builds up the gens on the other side of the map. Grey Knight Dreadnought coming out. Yeah, hitting them with that ability again, slowing them for a bit so the IC can get some good focus fire in. We've got the Tactical Sarge now and a LAS Cannon, but of course on their own they're just going to get run down by all this Grey Knight melee. Force Commander looking a little bit isolated right now. Ooh, we've got some war gear here for the BC. We do see the Power Fist now on the Force Commander. So the Grey Knight Dreadnought just running around with its Inferno Cannon to start with, of course if it can get to the gen farm it will be able to put on some serious pressure. Force Commander not got Artificer yet which seems strange. It'll definitely want to get that eventually. Oh and we've got a side cannon on the purgation as well so this is a nice all-round effective weapon here. It also ignores cover which is pretty sweet. It helps it deal with tactical marines sitting in cover which could be a problem in tier 2 especially if they pick up plasma guns. You can see a pretty effective tool here, and then the Purgation are in cover themselves, but a flank there from the scouts to try and open up the position, and it does. Gets rid of the Purgation, but... Yeah, now all the Grey Knights are leaving, Tax should be free to cap the mid. Grey Knight, Dreadnought went down, bashed a gen, moved away, didn't finish off the node. There's not really that many... well, there's no gens actually right now for Twelly. Not sure why the Grey Knight Dreadnought's quite so cautious, perhaps doesn't know the location of the last cannon, which we can see, of course, is back in the middle. Now, if you can snare the Dreadnought with the last cannon, then hit it with the Flesh Over Seal to stun it while it's in the range of the last cannon, that could be quite powerful. Be a good way to kill it. I would imagine that this thing will get a more dedicated weapon upgrade soon. Inferno Cannon's not particularly good against Space Marines. Grey Knight Librarian coming out as well. I wonder what Twilight is going to go for. Honestly, probably not a bad idea to go for the Razorback, to be honest. Is he dropping in Sternguard? Ooh, this was a change in the patch as well that we haven't seen yet. So you can no longer drop in a squad of Tactical Marines, you have to drop in a squad of Sternguard themselves. Fully upgraded straight away, but of course it costs a lot more resources. I can't tell you how much it costs off the top of my head. But I think it's like 350 and something else, so it's, it's pretty expensive. No, it's probably more than 350, isn't it? It's probably like 450 and something. But yeah, it gives him another option for AV now, with the Vengeance rounds here, which you can see a pew pewing. But I think right now the more pertinent problem is all the melee in the face of the Space Marines right now. Brother Captain's getting hunted down by the Force Commander with a Power Fist, and he deals with them quite well, but we've got Mind Blades here on the Strike Squad, doing a lot of damage to the Tactical Space Marines, and now going to be getting into melee with the Last Cannon. Last Cannon needs to retreat out of there before it dies. Okay, Strike Squad have been missed, Micro. Nothing is tying up the um, Stern Guard. The Terminator Librarian for the Grey Knights really should be doing that. The Stern Guard going to... Oh, no. Oh, Wow. I was going to say, they're going to weep Purgation fire to the face, but not at all. Purgation, Psycanon, and the Smite from the Librarian there, focusing the Scouts from Retreat, and actually wipes them. Kind of shocking, that one. But honestly, the Force Commander here has been going absolutely ham. Definitely should get the Artificer armor on this boy. He has just been running rampant in the Grey Knight lines. 
probably should be getting a weapon upgrade on the brother captain to go toe to toe with him. Because right now with the basic power sword, he's kind of like the Chaos Lord. He's very tanky, but he's he doesn't really do a lot of damage. And there's not really any good ranged options to focus fire down the Force Commander. The Grey Knights kind of lack that. I mean, but the Psychon is good. But it's not enough on its own. He's just going to run in with the Iron Halo. You can't really afford to be chasing him with your strike squad. The strike squad needs to get on the stern guard or the tacks to get rid of them nice and quick. I mean, you can protect your purgation with the sanctuary on the librarian. It's probably a good idea. But yeah, this is looking good for Twilight right now. 366 VPs on him, 140 on Fog. Flamers are back in play, burning down some generators. Let's see what the plan is here. I mean, you get a good smite there from the Terminator Librarian, taking out some Stern Guard, trying to stall with Sanctuary, but got to get out of there now, risking getting killed in retreat by the Hellfire. Oh, did he just get the combo? No, that's a melee Dreadnought. Stunned the Force Commander. Can he get it? Bang, he's just smacking it with his Power Fist. Can he take it out? So it has the 40% melee resist right now, but you can see it's taking huge damage thanks to that for the Emperor. Unfortunately, procking a special there, which doesn't actually do that much to the vehicles. Oh, one more hit can get it, but he might get suppressed by the base turrets. Very cool looking base turrets now as well. Literally one more hit would have killed that damn thing. But again, oh, is he going to punch the purgation? I was going to say it'll be another dead model. One punch, one dead Grey Knight. Force Commander, honestly, kicking ass right now. Twally, please, get the Artificer armor. Just make this guy even better. More energy for your Iron Halo, more energy regen, and more HP and more HP regen. Actually, I don't think it is energy regen. But more max energy, that's sufficient. Honestly, losing the interceptors here is absolutely screwed, Fog. It's really ruined his composition, and now he is the one that's bleeding. This is often a problem that you get in Tier 2, as the Ordo Malleus, because you have to commit so hard to all these engagements because you're melee focused. You can start bleeding quite a lot. Now, scouts here need to get out of there. They're very low on HP. Twilight so trying to keep them in play for that close range shotgun DPS. Okay, now gets them out of there. IST running super far forward. Okay, they're just going to run to melee with the Devastators. I guess that's alright. Yeah, Sterns get out of there thanks to the Strike Squad on them. Tactical Marines bleeding loads as well. I don't know why the attacks were so far forward. Wow. And they're going to get wiped potentially with the Storm Bolt to fire. Banishment missed. So was that a smite? I think that was a banishment from the Strike Squad. And the Force Commander went down in that fight too, so... Man, that fight went really bad for Twally. Twally is going to be going for a Dreadnought of his own, but the problem is that Fog's getting another squad of Purgation, perhaps anticipating the Dreadnought choice of Twally. So, of course, he can then get a Beamer, a Conversion Beamer, on that second squad of Purgation. And he can use that to kill the enemy Dreadnought. Now, we've got the Canticle of Absolution cast, as you can see here. That's going to be helping heal up these Grey Knights, improving their HP and their energy regen. Purgation, you see, we're on three models, but like 40% HP, so a lot of healing for them. But it's going to take forever to fully repair this Dreadnought. Greenout Dreadnought, really powerful walker, has by far the most HP of any walker in tier 2. But you've only got one squad repairing it right now, so it is going to take some time. Oh, he went for double Psy Cannon, okay. This is kind of a classic of this map. I remember in retail, you would always see double Chaos Havoc auto cannons. And side cannons are kind of the same principle. They're a little bit better against marines than the auto cannon. They're equal to the auto cannon against vehicles. They don't have the splash that the auto cannon has, but they do better single target damage. So very good against space marines. But nice little ambush there from the scouts. Probably want to retreat after that. Well, I suppose they're delaying the strike squad for now. Dreadnoughts going into melee. Two melee dreadnoughts, but the Grey Knight dreadnought is well it does have more max hp oh, actually this is a really good situation because it hasn't been fully healed you've got vengeance rounds now on the stern guard contributing and the side cannon is being thoroughly dealt with by the force commander right now gonna oh he gets another special totally has been so unlucky with those specials gonna rotate the force commander back into the center there we go wait is this a third squad of purgation oh my god it is and a beamer the dreadnought needs to commit Oh, the Dreadnought needs to get out. Ah, oh, get out! Get out quick before the... Oh, no. I'm going to get snared by the Beamer and potentially die. I've not been watching the back line. What is going on over here? The Devastator's got into the building. 
But will the Stern Guard survive? It looks like, nope, Stern Guard just got wiped and the Beamer kills the Dreadnought, which is gonna lead to a GG. Ah, so unfortunate, only 35 VPs left for Fog, but Twala Lee kind of throws away most of his units. Mm, scouts had to retreat out of that. Yeah, the Stern Guard got wiped down here and a little bit too slow on pulling the Dreadnought back there prior to the Psy Cannon opening fire and lost his Force Commander again. Really, really needed to get the Artificer on the Force Commander. I think Twala Lee put up a really good fight there. I wish I'd seen what happened to the Interceptors. It was probably an amazing macro and micro play to position the scouts in the correct position and then land the retreat grenade to wipe them. But going Devastators in your tier 1 against Interceptors is setting yourself up for a really hard matchup from the start. So Twally had it hard. I really think both players would have benefited a lot from getting a Razorback in tier 2. Though the the drop pod stern guard was quite effective for Twally. I do wonder... Razorback would have come out a lot sooner, and okay, you might have had less AV to deal with the enemy Dreadnought, but that's fine. You just send the Razorback down the sidelines, and then with scouts running down the sidelines as well against only one IST, I think you would have had an amazing situation with the VPs, and he already had him in this game, down to 35, so he probably would have already won it on VPs, to be honest. Because it took Fog a long time to get the Dreadnought and the Terminator Librarian combo out. It's pretty cool to see the purgation afterwards, and that third purgation actually worked. I don't know if that was intentional or not. It, it might have been intentional, actually, since he got this, the Psy Cannon purgation before seeing the Dreadnought. So then he seen the Dreadnought and was like, oh shit, I need to get some real AV, get the conversion beamer. Mm. Double Psy Cannon, double Auto Cannon, pretty good on this map because you just really lock down the middle. But yeah, there you go, a little bit of Space Marines versus Audemalius on the new patch. Hope you enjoyed that one, folks. That's going to be all from your boy Torpid this time. I am signing out.